Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, it's me, Taylor, from the Thread to Men podcast, and I have just another quick tutorial video for you on how to work the two over two left cross cable. I just started working on this pattern by Caitlin Hunter. I'm having a lot of fun with this, and I thought I would show you this very simple cabling technique in case it is helpful to you in perhaps attempting a project that is a little intimidating at the start. You'll see that this one in particular has a little bit of twisted stitches in the collar and neckband. Uh, it continues with some rather simple lace. I wouldn't be too intimidated by it, even if you are new to lace knitting, um, while also working some simple cables and color work. I've worked a few patterns of color work designs by Caitlin Hunter before, and some charts are more intuitive than others. And this color work chart in particular is one of the most intuitive color work charts that I've worked. So I wouldn't be intimidated by that either. Um, all color work charts are not created equal. There are some gorgeous geometric designs that just can be simply challenging to remember as you knit across them. And this one, I have to say, is quite simple and straightforward. So if you're thinking about casting on a project with this many uh, skills and techniques, I would just take your time, do one stitch at a time, and you'll have a sweater before you know it. I want to also preface this video with asking that if you find this content at all helpful or if you've enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up. It is so helpful to my channel when there's some engagement. Even if you hate my video, you can give it a thumbs down. That's fine too. I'm okay with that. Um, but if you want to see more content from me here, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. So I'm going to show you now this two over two left cross cable. Um, you'll see that I like to load my stitches up on my left hand needle here. I'm going to drop my contrast yarn because I'm not working that for this portion of the pattern. And I'm going to simply bring my right needle into these four stitches we're working and I'm going to slip those four stitches off onto my right needle. Now I'm going to take my left needle forward and pick up those first two stitches that I slipped. I'm then going to very gently and kind of pinch my stitches between my fingers here. I'm going to gently remove my right hand needle out from beneath those four stitches, bring it behind the two I already picked up, and pick up those two on the left again. That's going to allow me to cross these two stitches forward in front, and then I'll take those two stitches back onto the left needle. All that's left to do is simply knit into those four stitches Oopsies, that'll show you what it's like to make a mistake. And there you have it. It is the two over two left cross cable. I hope that this was helpful to you. If there are any other techniques that you would like a quick tutorial on, do not hesitate to let me know in a comment below. I wonder if you're knitting this pattern or perhaps thinking about knitting this pattern now that you can see um, that it is approachable, even if you have not yet explored all of these techniques yet. In fact, I think it's a great introduction to cables, a great introduction to lace, a great introduction to color work. Um, always fun to knit a new project where you have one new skill you have not yet already accomplished in one way or another, uh, or to just refine some application of those skills. So tell me, are you going to knit it? Do you like it? Do you love it? This yarn is a little bit of my hand spun, which I will talk more about in my next podcast episode once I get around to recording that for you all. I hope to record that podcast this week and just consider this one a little bit of a bonus video for you all to thank you for subscribing and being here with me on my channel. Anyway, I'm going to get back to knitting this row before I go into work. I hope that you're well. Um, and if you want to connect with me on social media, if you have any questions about knitting or need help with something, don't hesitate to reach out. You can find me on social media as Taylor E. Owen. I'm on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, all of those platforms with that same handle, Taylor E. Owen, and you can find me there. 
Again, I want to thank you so much for your time today and watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you all soon. Bye. Today's a day of bonus content for you all. I wanted to give a quick garden tour. Today is, uh, it's like mid August. I don't know the day, <laughs> but you can see I have collard greens and black eyed seasons growing in abundance. There's some echinacea. I have a ton of basil in here if you can find it. This tomato plant I've been meaning to remove, but uh, all of these squash have kind of self started way back in the spring. So they have blown up um, in the shade of previous plants and that they are taking off now that I've removed the plants that were growing in this area. Not sure exactly what they are because they're from my compost bin, but I do have a fruit down here if you can see. Very exciting. <laughs> Lemon balm plant right here. More black eyed Susans. These are all cucumbers. You can see a ton of fruit right there. And beans. I am much better at growing bean plants than I am beans. I have as many beans as I have plants growing this season, but that's okay. There's just a little too much nitrogen in their soil, so rather impressive looking, but not a huge harvest. Um, what else? We have a few random kale and collard green plants in some of these beds. And we've had a ton of cucumbers this year. The raspberries, I have removed all of the canes that are dying back this year. So there's a lot more space for new growth to pop up over the fall and winter months. They are somewhat haphazardly tied up and they've expanded their bed on their own about double what it once was. So I can't complain about too many raspberries. This St. John's wort plant has exploded. I'm gonna have to trim it back in the fall or winter. And our blackberries are ripening, which um, is nice. It's rather cool out today. So I might spend a little time picking some of those berries. Otherwise it can easily go undone. Again, another surprise squash plant of some sort. We've had good luck with squash growing in the garden. And this is just a try anything area where a bunch of stuff is happening. So this will probably get cleared out in the fall. I'm growing a sunflower for the first time. Rather exciting. There was a larger head that's died back and now a second looks like a third popping up, which I think is beautiful. But this is the garden and one of the feral cats that I care for here. We call this cat Orange Tabby. This big plant here is horseradish. We will harvest that in the fall. I have some oregano going to seed, which I do not mind. This is a baby pawpaw tree right here. We have again some more kale plants here and there. This is our abundant bed of collard greens. There are six plants. Just six plants alone is enough to feed a household of two, but we have probably double that. And this is the garden in August. It's quite a mess, but an organized bit of chaos. And I hope you enjoy this little bit of extra content. Just thought I'd show you my garden. The year is 2020. Everyone's gardening this year, um, but this has been the best garden of these last five years. Quite fun and so rewarding. These are my stinging nettles, if I haven't ever shown these to you. I've been harvesting those a few times this summer already. Uh, you want to cut them down before they go to seed so that you can dry them for tea and uh, or you know cooking whatever you want to do with nettles. Oh I'm also growing some purslane for seed. This is generally found in uh, cracks in the concrete. Uh, I don't eat it when I find it in the city because it definitely has dog pee all over it, but <laughs> um, I'm really happy that I have some finally growing in the garden now. So I got a little bit there and I have a little pocket of it hiding here. And there's another area of the garden that maybe gets a little bit more water and a little less sun. So it's not taken off quite the same, but might transfer any one of these to a pot or a container where it will dry out a little more. Seems to enjoy really hot, dry areas when I find it around the city.
but I don't know. I wonder what you're growing this year. Are you growing anything in your garden? These cattle panels have been a godsend in 2020. I got my brother-in-law to deliver these one day. I'm lucky to know someone with a huge truck because they are 16 feet long. So you definitely have to bend them as they are positioned if you're going to fit those in a truck bed. That is for sure. I wish I had a full size cucumber to show you because these ones that you're looking at here, they get so much bigger than this. This is just a baby size. They get at least twice this in length and width. Uh, but the long beans that I'm growing are also quite fascinating. There's a larger cucumber hanging out there. I just can't get enough of being in the garden if it weren't for the mosquitoes. Oh, I don't think I'll find it again, but there was a, here it is. Do you see that praying mantis? You see that praying mantis right there? He's been hanging out there for a day or so. Very cool. These mosquitoes are starting to eat me up, so I have to cut this short, but I wanna thank you again for watching, and I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Take care.